Hey, it's Jane. And this is Editing Jane. I started this video as an Instagram live and then continued it as a live stream in my Facebook group. So we're going to swap out of this vertical format in just one second. But I just wanted to show you where this next part started from and I just began by swatching out the new colors from the Sushi Roll layer cake palette and as I progressed I started to see these little blobs as oh, little faces maybe with little top knots maybe I could draw a few little faces with a breakfast at Tiffany's vibe it's always kind of interesting where ideas come from. Sometimes they come from color swatching blobs. And now, <laughs> a day or so later, I did a live stream in my Facebook group. So I've got a live virtual audience to interact with me. And in one of my previous lives, uh, someone had asked for more information about color. And I thought, well, let's get out a color wheel and talk about complementary colors. This is a color scheme that I use a lot because the thing with a, co a complementary color is it sits opposite. The complementary colors sit opposite each other on a color wheel. And the effect they have on each other is to make themselves look extra vibrant and extra bright when they're near each other. It can also make them extra overwhelming and extra intense in artwork. Also, when you mix them, they create an instant neutral. And all of these things are very, very helpful for art. We need the neutrals to let the colors pop. And we can use bright colors or more intense colors to add visual interest and high points in the artwork. And also just using beautiful colors, whatever that means to you, is very good for the artist's soul and our general overall happiness and well-being. So we're going to start with pickled and ginger. Each of the sushi palettes have two uh, colors in each palette. So they have their own name, but together as a pan, they have a name as well when it's joined together. But for the first color, the opposite of pickled and ginger or together, pickled ginger, is going to be a lime green. So I'm going to use the mint sorbet from the rainbow cake palette. This is one of the original palettes and I'm just mixing up a really nice yellowy, bright, vibrant green. And I'm using a water brush that doesn't have water in it. I love using water brushes because they've got that nylon uh, nib, nib do we call it with the brush? Bristles. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the nylon bristles. They hold their shape really, really well. And you do have the, have the added benefit of being able to add water in there. For this, I don't want to make my mix too watery. I want to keep it quite creamy and have it more of a gouache consistency. The closest thing that layer cakes um, are, or re uh, act like is gouache but they have that ease of watercolor because they're in pans and they layer more like acrylic so they've got some unique properties but they do have similarities to some of my favorite art supplies I'm just going to bump this up into two times speed because the lesson here really is in how the colors work with each other rather than the drawing <laughs> <laughs> what I want to share with you uh, is more about the colors. So when you mix complementary colors, you start to get beige-ish, grayish neutrals or sometimes brownish, but they're all a neutral tone and it happens quite quickly. So if you're painting happily along, tra la 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 la, and then suddenly you've got mud, you've mixed complementary colors. So <laughs> we've got that beautiful bright cool pink and the gorgeous limey yellow and then when I've mixed them together we start to go into like a bruisish uh, neutral you can see it up the top there and then I love when I'm creating these little swatchy faces when I start to add some little white highlights and I'm using my pinpoint paint pens so the white is called snow white 
this one's from the metallic set it's called clock strikes 12. when you add the little darker starks on the lashes the pupils maybe a little bit under the nose up to you a little bit of a personality starts to emerge i've also added some gold in the from the lustrous eclairs palette it's a color called gold amex uh, for little earrings the next color on the color wheel when i look at that one we want a more of an emerald green so i'm using the green from the mint sorbet palette there's three little colors in there the idea being with these pans that have the mixed colors like this is when you rub your brush into them you uh, can create nice little background greeneries and skies with the blue one that's next to it it's also a way of me squeezing in some extra colors <laughs> into the palette and so this big uh, color wheel I can't remember the name of it but I actually have a much better one this little guy we uh, actually even sell this in our store because I love this little palette I used to be able to get it in sorry color wheel I used to be able to get it in a bigger size but see how it's got the holes in it so you can hold it above a color and then you can it's got the, all of those little squares and numbers and then on the opposite side you can get a bit more of a closer match and holding it over the top of the artwork just makes it easier for you to look at the colors and then select the uh, complementary or split complementary or how, whatever color theory you want to apply <laughs> I live in complementary where I'm living so the opposite for these corals so the two colors underneath are pink uh, sorry <laughs> prawn and shrimp and that beautiful lovely blue I'm just letting that blue dry a bit and giving my little girls here just a little bit of uh, face management <laughs> because these just started off as blobs I didn't intend for these to be faces as I showed you at the very beginning of the video they were just blobs and I you know, drew, drew lines to interconnect so the colors could bleed from one to the other maybe it could become a little bit of a background for something at some point but you know this is my art and I can do what I like with it so I've used the pavlova white just to add a little bit of chin shape I can use it as an eraser basically and take it back to the white of the paper or just as I've done there just to hint at where the chin is and then again mixing the um, prawn color with a little bit of the blue that I've used so I think the blue that I used is jelly trifle that gives me that last lovely bright blue and then mixing those two together you see how I get that nice light brown it just adds a little bit of depth to the brighter colors that are sitting there underneath it and then of course adding a little bit of the white uh, paint pen on there it's so opaque my little pinpoint paint pens the storytime ink it's lovely and if you're just starting to work with colors and just starting to employ a color wheel and think more strategically about the colors that you want to use uh, I'm going to I'll slow the video down to show you because it's a little bit trickier when you're looking at a neutral color like the color that I've got uh, next which is tempura veggies tempura is on the top veggies is on the bottom Ooh, these names make me hungry so you would think this color is going to be a brown well a brown doesn't really exist on the outer rim of the color wheel so when you look at the color more subjectively or just align it up in those little windows you can see that it's really a light red and then when you take it across to its complementary so I'm just got to go across the color wheel and then go to the coordinating numbers and I can see that what might look really pretty really popping next to each other is a beautiful light aqua so I'm using the color macaroon from <laughs> I love the names from the ice cream slice uh, palette these were two of the original colorways then I did the metallic and the neons the lollies and the lustrous eclairs and now we're adding the sushi roll and uh, I'm also as I'm drawing all of these ladies they're all having their little top knots but I'm trying to make their fringes 
or their bangs are a little bit different for each one. So I've got a center part on this girl and more of a bouncing one on the one next to her side part in the girl in front, you know, da, da, da. so they're slightly different because that's good practice. And then other things I like to do is try and make the mouth a little bit different, the eyes different. You can start playing with the placement of the features. So making the nose longer, shorter, eyes further apart, closer apart. And when you're drawing lots of little faces like this next to each other, playing with maybe even different expressions, you just learn a lot. You self-teach lots of nice little skills. And as my paint dries, I'm adding in my little highlights again. If you go over the wet paint, uh, it might just bleed off into the wet uh, area. So just if you let it dry, then you can create your heart's content and layer, layer, layer. I can also go over and add more color just so that I get a, a purer color uh, and also can mix the colors and get my neutrals there as well, mixing those complementaries. Now with this beautiful brown, the base tone is really living in those yellows. So if I take that across from yellow, we're going into purples. And the way that I remember uh, so I don't even have to look at a color wheel. The way that I remember complementary colors is purple and yellow are very often associated, associated with Easter. So I know if I've got anything from a, either of those two families, I know what their uh, friend is going to be. And I know if I find anything in the red family, green is going to be its complementary color and you can remember that by christmas red and green is christmas <laughs> colors and red of course is all of the pinks all of the wine colors anything with a red base pink is just red with white added and the way i remember the complementary of blues is i think of uluru or it used to be called airs rock in australia beautiful orange rock with the gorgeous blue sky behind it. And in just those three complementary combinations, we've got our three primaries and our three secondary colors. So we have our red, blue and yellow as our primaries and we have purple, green and orange. So just by remembering those three color combinations, you can carry a color wheel in your own head. Thinking of them as Easter, Christmas and Uluru works for me, but you might, those colours might uh, sit with each other in a different way in your mind. Whatever works for you is going to be perfect. And the complementary colours is the reason why, well, I think <laughs> this beautiful dark navy blue, which is dark rum from the new Sushi palette, looks so beautiful over that beautiful chocolate brown which is the sauce part of dipping sauce <laughs> and when you hold the color wheel over this color it's it's yellow and it's that's it's family so falling out across from there blue but which blue so you can start uh, really playing with the color wheel but i'm using it in a, in a very traditional sense in that this dark yellow, which is essentially what this particular brown is, it's complementary is going to be a blue. It's a dark yellow. This is going to be a dark blue. And as you get used to this, and, and this becomes one of the tools in your creative supply, you can also start playing with changing those. So yes, you could have this yellowy dark brown, the complementary of that is going to be a dark blue, but you could add a turquoise or a different blue. So it's not with, it's not that far away, but you're going to get the, the benefits of the complementariness, the, the popping color, but you're also going to get something a little bit different too. So using my color wheel again, we discover that this olive lives in the bright yellow family coming across from that purple. Easter but using this color wheel that drab 
sort of olive say or um, sage is really going into the next color section but those are sort of drab yellows those uh, dried grass yellows beautiful colors uh, but going across we're going to be moving into a really nice deep purple this will allow the two colors to shine uh, with each other and make each other stand out in and of their own accord another thing to look out for with using complementary colors is when they are together they are very impactful they resonate they vibrate against one another so just an idea just a thought is to give emphasis in quantity to one or the other when you've got two strong colors together that's when you get the clashing colors and it's just such a good <laughs> word when colors are clashed they are fighting for dominance so you know they're called complementary colors but <laughs> there is a little bit of a fight for dominance so I think as the artist what you can do is declare who the winner is and in terms of what I'm creating on the page here the winner really in terms of quantity is the little top knot color that I've already got there as the swatches but then again our eye loves detail so even though I've got a smaller quantity of the complementary color it's still looking lovely and vibrant with its bright friend and it's looking more juicy rather than clashy even though I've got a lot going on you might not agree with that statement <laughs> might be looking clashy to you but to me seeing these colors singing along and being happy and holding hands makes me a very happy artist and I'm now that the paint is dry up on that top row I can start to add my little darkest dark so under the nose maybe in the nostrils of course the pupil uh, the, that purple wasn't quite dry so I really need to let it dry and then any little whites that I want to add into the eyes and onto little highlights on the nose on the lips on the cheekbones let's do this beautiful aqua so this color is the sea urchin C is at the top urchin at the bottom and it lives in this green palette then when I go across on my color wheel and marry up the coordinating side I'm looking at beautiful shrimps prawns salmon those sorts of colors which just so happen to be in the sushi palette uh, there's shrimp and prawn perfect color these might not be colors that you would use that often when you're drawing faces because we don't all the time draw green skin but when you're drawing light colored eyes uh, with blue and green undertones and if you add a little bit of tear duct color this nice coral you know the shrimp prawn salmon family it just the eyes look so alive and gives a little bit of extra mm, Ooh, la lanas because they are complementaries so it says sort of would you call it a drab teal <laughs> they're beautiful colors beautiful for doing uh, eye colors beautiful for um, f oceans and for landscapes and for hazy distance as well as for some details and to be quite frank as a foil to coral which <laughs> coral and the corally orange family oh I just really adore so I'm also adding a little bit of the lighter color in there as well which is the shrimp the prawn is, is darker in the palette they look very very similar but they do have their own keynotes their own little story to tell always adding the little highlight oh just they suddenly become little people <laughs> now you don't have to just use a white highlight you could use a cream or you could experiment with other light colors 
Now we've got these beautiful drabby blues that are at the bottom and we've got sake and dark rum. So I'm just looking for the right color. It's sort of sitting right there in the darkest dark brown and the purples. And then we're going to go across from that. And you remember the opposite of the blue family is, test yourself here, think blue skies, the blues. And what did I show you with blue? That incredible orange rock. Uluru. So Uluru is just flat in the Australian outback in that part and there's just this one monolithic beautiful great big rock <laughs> that goes very orange at the end of the day and that is our complementary so we're going to go into that story and according to the colour reel, the colour reel, the colour wheel, uh, we want to have a really like orangey red so that's what we're going to go into. I'm using creme brulee from the rainbow cake. Yes, rainbow cake palette. The nice thing with the layer cakes is all of the little pans are removable so you can move them about. So you can customize your own palettes. You might want to put all the blues in one. You might want to put the complementary colors together in one. You, there's just so many options. <laughs> So I'm playing with a few different reds and oranges there. She needs a little bit of face shaping with some white paint. We'll get that, get to that in a moment. And again, trying to think of a different fringe. Okay, so we're going for another side part. There we go. <laughs> and get a nice creamy portion of pavlova, which is the white from the palettes. And just um, put a little bit of highlight in the hair put a little bit of face shaping so it's not just a blob and oh, as you uh, every time I say the white but I've used the white from the layer cake set that pavlova white uh, which is just so lovely and opaque this is why I say it's got that layerability like acrylics even though they are a water soluble media they love to layer on top of each other, uh, especially once they're dry, you can really layer, 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 layer. The closest thing to them is gouache. Think of them as a gouache in a pan. And gouache, go ooh ash, <laughs> you spell it out. Gouache is opaque watercolor. Ah, now I just use my color wheel here for color wheel magic and you know it's going to be Easter yellow there is symbolism between the cut that it's not something that's so prevalent now uh easter or spring being the purple and yellow but it's purple for royalty and yellow for sunshine and life there is symbolism attached to the colors but what might be more useful is thinking of chocolate <laughs> cadbury chocolate very often associated with easter uh, i don't know if they're all around the world but i do know they have delicious chocolate and their corporate colors are purple and yellow because they stand out and they have a richness, which is a nice thing to associate with chocolate, right? Okay, so we have our purple and yellow and popping that down on here, trying to give her fuller little bangs. And it's always mm, a little extra challenge, a little extra fun when you've got a light color being put over the top of a dark color like this because the purple uh, has just it's just a, a darker value color than bright sunny happy yellow but the layer cakes they'll hold their own I can let it dry off a little bit and to make myself <laughs> let things dry I just pick up a different color and work on the highlights again for uh, each of the different little faces or start at the darks just things to stop me from fussing while I'm waiting for something to dry which is a lovely thing to happen to little blobs <laughs> on a piece of paper now I think they all need some earrings so I'm going to do different <laughs> earrings you get an earring you get an earring you get an earring so some have drop pearls some have drop triangles we have big hoops we have little hoops we have studs we have danglies loop de loops and ooh la la's and I've used the gold card metallic layer cake from lustrous eclairs oh delicious now Let's have a little close-up look at them at our little 
Complementary, our opposites, our colour wheel exploration and fun. <laughs> I hope that you really enjoyed this process, this lesson. I recommend it as a fun thing to do. Oh, look at those layer cakes, the way that they granulate. Oh, and they're going to behave differently on different papers. So you're going to get more granulation on a paper that has got a bit of texture in it, like the paper that is in my watercolor journals. And think of the way that colors can mix and how you can make them really pop against each other and then how you're going to express that in the rest of your art. You can find my art supplies in fabulous stores all around the world. Google will be your friend in that regard. But the layer cakes are an exclusive to janedovenport.com to my own website where you can find all sorts of resources to learn and get the most out of your creativity, including awesome art supplies. See you there.